Pale Black Match. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah? Right? Yes. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. There's a module for that? There, of course there is. So, Eric Mandel and I are at... PHP World, World, just outside of Washington, D.C. I've been having a great time. What's your impression of this conference of the, of the PHP projects coming together? I think it's been a phenomenal event so far. The number of different projects that have come together, as opposed to just a one event with Drupal, you've gotten a chance to meet, mingle, learn the symphony, learn the other Zen frameworks and that. It's been really an exciting conference so far. All right, so what have you learned? Um, I've learned that I am behind on a couple technologies. I've learned there are some new, very cool tools out there that can automate some things at the code level and at the deployment level, things that are working really well with some of the DevOps stuff that we've been focused on. Okay, so it's been worth it for you. Absolutely. You are the CEO of Black Mesh. Yes. Tell us, introduce yourself, <laughs> and uh, tell us something about what you and Black Mesh do. Black Mesh um, is a service company. We focus on taking care of infrastructure and platform for websites, a lot of Drupal, mainly Drupal at the enterprise level. Um, it is a great challenge. I'm a computer nerd at, home, at heart, used to be a, a programmer. So now getting a chance to work with and see the sites as they go, scale, really hit large enterprises, is a lot of fun to see those difficult challenges overcome by some really smart people. How did you discover open source software? Do you have a first memory? Um, late 90s, early uh, mid-90s or so, um, getting exposed to Perl and PHP for the first time, and then Apache, and at that point in time, it was still Mosaic and all that sort of stuff, but really excited. I was not a computer science uh, in college, so learning about that and coming out to the real world and understanding what was out there and that there was more than just Microsoft and Apple all the time, but there was this whole open source world of tools and toys that you could play with and make very cool things was sort of um, a very important event for me getting out of college. So talk about being uh, an open source businessman. It is a little different than what most people expect. You end up being a service company. You end up helping people achieve their goals by putting the right tools and the right capabilities with them, making sure that, recognizing that people are specialists. Everyone has the things that they know how to do where they can add, but they may not know everything. So we're able to help them. You can focus on content, delivering your message, influencing people, whether it's a nonprofit or a government or, or even a commercial entity. Well, we can focus on the infrastructure and the plumbing, so to speak, that's not that interesting to most people. But to a tech person is a lot of fun and a lot of exciting. What I like in the open source business world is that we're not just gatekeepers in terms of we collect a license fee to give you permission right. to, be, to, to execute on your vision, right? right, to change the world. We are there always, by definition, to add value, right? Right. And we are absolutely about freedom and giving people the power and the ability to do what they want and be in control of their own stuff. You don't, as you mentioned, license fees and vendor lock-in and those sorts of things. Sort of how they said information is free, and once it gets out, it can never be uh, brought back in. I believe the same is true in open source in that, that as these capabilities get out there and they get free in that, they can do incredible good around the world, and they're not going to be pulled back in. So let's help people utilize these things and take advantage of them. As a mostly Drupal business, have you been following the Drupal 8 development and release cycle? Absolutely. Um, we've been involved in Drupal since late four, early Drupal five stuff. So the six, the seven, and then very excited about all the incredible features and ease of use and how Drupal eight really is an incredible thing, and particularly at PHP world where you're talking about bringing back off the island and work with the rest of the PHP frameworks and that. Um, 
it's been a great um, challenge is that, as you well know in the project, so being able to watch it and try and help it along and get it out faster um, is something that I believe all of us are trying to do. As an infrastructure service provider, how is Drupal 8 going to benefit you and your operations? Um, a couple fold, not necessarily in the site user thing that most people think about with Drupal 8, but easing administration, easing control, migration configs, all those sorts of things. But at a bigger level, it's going to make Drupal more available to more people to do more things. And I think that is going to be great, not only for us as a business, but for the community and then for all those organizations that are able to use it and push their message, get their uh, goals accomplished for it. So at the end of the day, it really comes down to making things easier for more people. Do you have a specific feature that you're most excited about? Um, probably different than most people, some of the back-end configuration and how that has been simplified and you can keep much more of it under source control and that sort of thing. Um, it simplifies some of the deployment process and things that we've worked on that our internal tools use in that. So I think that will be a, a nice change. C CMI, I, I would imagine that CMI would be your yes. friend and helper in your yes. business. Yes, it would. So making sure that all of that will be a nice new feature. You touched on a theme that's really important to us in open source. We build the tools we use, we use the tools we build. We're free to improve them, we're free to make them, whether for our clients or ourselves. You know, we can get them as far as we have time and energy to do. Not everyone pays, pays that back or pays it forward as much as others. Dries Bertalt, the project lead in Amsterdam, at DrupalCon in his keynote was talking about some new ideas, some new ways to try and motivate, especially companies, to contribute back to Drupal. Black Mesh is one of the companies really at the forefront of this. You're doing this already. Spring 2014, you hired Kathy Thays. Yes. It's my understanding that you hired Kathy to do what she does, to be who she is, to mentor, to contribute to core. Yes. Um, she sort of gave me a quizzical look when I repeated myself and said, Kathy, your job description, be Kathy, wear a black mesh shirt. Um, she goes out, she goes to events where we're not able to go to. We used to sponsor and try and give back and help and communities that way. And this gave us a much more concrete, I think, a much more impactful way to influence and work with little camps, little communities, and bring Drupal up. As you mentioned, she's in the mentoring, she's in the new, the Drupal 8 and the testing and the issue queue. So she sees the forefront of what's coming down the pike, but also the new people coming on. She's doing a lot with the sprints and that. So for us, it was an ability to personify and uh, impact on things as opposed to just sort of that, here's some sponsor, here's some peripheral dollars, go okay, do Okay, so you're, you're making, a, you're making a, a, a specific, measurable, concrete difference to the project rather than just kind of throwing pizzas at it yes. and hoping that it'll be better? Yes, and that, that was really one of the things we wanted to get out of it was we thought it was much more focused and impactful to have her out there doing those sorts of things and that it is not, it was for us, the community, to be able to give back, for us to have a better pulse, so to speak, on the community and understand what's going on, where the pain points are, how we can help, how we can do things. and. It has been amazing how much she's been able to do that just in raising our awareness of things that are coming down the pike, of issues where we could help that we didn't necessarily know we could help, being able to do things with just introductions of people I'd never met before on sprints and technical side and that. So it's been um, a wonderful uh, experience for us. It, it has gone better than I ever had imagined. So, so you're actively contributing as a company. You're getting a lot of valuable information on, uh, for instance, more ways to help that you didn't have access to before. But talk to your fellow business leaders, CEOs out there. How can you justify, honestly, uh, someone who is not on client projects, who's not generating revenue? What's the, what's the advantage that you're getting from this? 
being able to serve our customers better because we know more of what's happening, what the pain points are, how to address things like that. Also, getting more information and more relationships with different customers, different development shops, different companies in the Drupal ecosystem. Also, um, Kathy is, is wonderful in that she's gone outside of Drupal, and so she's done things in Symphony and that. So getting introductions to that and learning things about that and understanding the big picture. And sometimes it's just nice to have a perspective and be able to ask an opinion of someone who's not sitting in your office every day, who's not looking at the exact same screens and the exact same problems to say, what, what is this gonna impact? Is this helpful or not? So there are lots of ways both measurable and more subjective of, of benefits I find of getting that. And I only know about the impact she's had. I only know about the people that ha have come back to us and said, oh, I talked to Kathy and I learned about you guys or she said you might be able to help me on this. Is this something we can do? I don't know about all the other conversations she's had. I don't know how many other people she's influenced, impact, or talked to. I just know what we've seen, and from our perspective, it's been a wonderful experience. So your benefits seem to be, from my perspective, you get a better Drupal back, and that's one of your main sources of revenue. Yes. Um, you get uh, much, you're, you're much more closely tied to the community that's working and building Drupal every day. and. For me, the, the subjective stuff that you were talking about seems to be that you end up with a, a company that's a much uh, richer and deeper organization with a, with, with a lot more facets to it, and, and she can sort of round some rough edges off here and, and build some relationships there. It sounds like, um, as you say, it might be hard to quantify right yeah. now, but you end up with a, with a, a richer organization yes. and probably a lot more potential to go in a lot more directions in the future? Is that, is that the bet that you're making? There's a lot of that, absolutely. As I mentioned yesterday, um, there's a diversity thing, uh, PHP world, and that bringing diversity in always brings strengths and improvements to a community. And I believe that at an ecosystem level, also at a company level, um, an individual level too. But at a company level, it's been really helpful for that. And while Black Mesh is a little different in that we're not devs, we're infrastructure and we're supporting and we're processing that, having someone who has the ability to tell us this is what devs are thinking, this is what the project's doing, is a wonderful asset for us. Okay, so in a way she's your developer advocate. She's our community advocate, community is, how advocate. I've, is how I've described her is. She mm -hmm. helps us help Drupal. Okay, and Point four of my list from before, um, in a pure business sense, Kathy out there doing good. As you said, she's she's brought Black Mesh to a lot more uh, people's awareness. Yes. Um, and over in marketing land, uh, we generally contend that that brings more business over time. Absolutely, and and. I mean, there's, there's, there's always good to have your brand out there, to have your logo, to have people hear about you and talk about that. And so she is going places doing things that we normally wouldn't be at, whether it's the hardcore dev sprint days or that. Um, things where it wasn't a community thing that she's absolutely able to expand that and bring new people into it. So it is definitely worth it, I believe, both on the quantifiable and the subjective level to have that. And sometimes it just makes you feel good to give back. And I think there's something to be said for that. We wouldn't be here without open source. So that keeping that cycle going, keeping that ecosystem going, I think is a very important part of the whole system. Well, I'm really, really glad you did this. Thank you so much, Thank you so much for, for your contributions. Me. Thank you so much for paying Kathy to be Kathy. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and thanks for taking the time to talk with me. My pleasure. Thank you very much for inviting thanks, me. Eric. Appreciate it, Jim.